even if they ask, if they come in and say, hey, I want to live with all of the Catholics. I don't know where that's at, and I can't certainly tell you where that's at. Because if I do, I am steering you based on your religion to where you want to be. And that's what Andy told this guy. He said, I need you to go to the Hispanic consulate. You do your own research where the heavy population is and then come back and tell us a location. That's fine. Now you've come back to me and said, I want to live at Washington and Belmont because I believe, I being the customer, I believe that's where a, a, a heavy concentration is. Another good example is you guys know where Homecomings is? It's right there at Main Street on the other side. Yeah. Heavily populated by the Indian culture. But you certainly, we all know that. You can drive in the area and probably seven out of 10 homes are of the same nationality. But if someone said, I want to live with other Indian culture, you can't go, well, let's go to homecoming. That's steering. Now, if they said, I want to live in that housing addition on the other side over there, okay, I'll take you over there and we'll find a house. Because geography is not protected, but the religion is, or the race, or the national origin. Even though we may think that, you can't do it. Even if they ask you to, that's what this gentleman did. He said, look, I don't speak English very well. I wanna live in a Hispanic neighborhood. And I suggested Washington and Belmont and Andy said, no, but he asked, it doesn't matter. I can't help you on that. I don't know where the Hispanic neighborhood is. I don't know where the Catholic neighborhood is. All right. So you cannot steer a person towards or away from using one of the seven protected classes as your compass. Now, here's the one that really bites my butt. And I'm here to tell you now. Me personally believe that when we talk about fair housing and you have a couple questions, we all know the warm and fuzzy and what is right and what is correct. But we literally practice differently. All right. There is a girl on the west side of Indianapolis named Donna Seacat. She is Hispanic. All of her signs are in the Spanish language. All right, because she is helping an underutilized, what they call emerging market. The Indian culture, the Burmese and the Hispanic right now are what a lot of lenders and agents are calling the emerging markets. And we all understand that she is helping them. But literally based upon this rule right here, there is no way to not violate this rule. All right. Literally, I hang out with older, white, male, well-to-do, Cigar smokers. Why do you think that is? Because that's what I am. All right. That's what I am. We all tend to hang out in a group that we are comfortable with. When I went to Germany to visit my brother, we saw this. We're eating in the all these German restaurants. And one day we saw this sign. It said, American hamburger. Oh, we got to go there because we're, you know, want to talk, speak English. We want to eat American food and all that. And it's funny. We were standing going skiing and my brothers didn't get a ticket, the tickets for the train. And I'm standing outside and my hair at that time was even longer. And my beard was dark. And this lady walks up to me and she goes, do you speak English? And I said, yes. 
is this the train to the Zutzpick Mountain? I said, yes, I believe it is. Do you know how much the tickets are? Uh, I don't know. My brother's in buying the tickets. I'm just out here. You speak very good English. How long have you been speaking English? I said, 25 years. I'm from friggin' Indiana. She's like, oh, I'm from Texas. We're neighbors. So, yeah, people tend to hang around people that they are similar or alike because we have a lot of the same qualities. We actually have a degree called target marketing. We talk about target marketing. But when you do it in a housing situation, this rule right here is going to show you there is no way to not violate this rule. All right. Let me read you a paragraph out of this page. Um, the selective use of media, whether by language or geography, may have a discriminatory impact. For instance, Advertising property only in a Korean language newspaper tends to discriminate against non-Koreans. Well, first of all, duh, right? So what's the official language of the United States? Anybody? English. Going once, going twice. There is no official language of the United States. No. It never was adopted to be English. It just so happens that the predominant number of people that were here that created this society spoke English. But our forefathers talked about the melting pot and they understood that we wanted to mix all of the races and come together as one. So they never adopted English as the official language of the United States. So here's the problem. It literally tells you the example. So Donna Seacat's signs that are in Spanish, if you don't speak Spanish, you can't read any of her posters, her signs, her ads in the La Ola magazine. That by definition, I just read it to you, is a discriminatory act. So here's the question. Let's make that one more evolution. Are there people in the United States that don't speak English? Yes. So if I put my for sale sign in the yard that is in English, is it in fact discriminating against the ones that don't speak English? Based on what this rule just says, yes, it is. So theoretically, you would have to advertise in every language to not violate this rule. There is no way that you cannot not violate that rule. The simple fact, even if you put it in English, by definition, English is not the... Uh, standard language, somebody may not be able to read it, and that by uh, Fair Housing Act rules is discrimination. So like, why is that a, so like, why is that a rule then? Like, why is that even in here? Okay, and this goes back to, I guess, what I was trying to start to say earlier. We all understand the warm and fuzzy of it to try and make sure we don't eliminate a person and we know what should be the correct answer, but the reality is we do something completely different. It's not that I would not hang out with 14 year old Asian girls. They wouldn't hang out with me and I'd probably get arrested if I did. But the fact is we have nothing in common, so I wouldn't hang out with them. We tend to all gravitate towards our own kind of group, whether it's financially, uh, you know, socially, uh, by age. So, like I said, we all understand what Donna Seacat's doing. I am commending her for helping an emerging market. I don't know anybody that probably would report her, 
But basically, based on what it says here, you can't do that. So there's got to be some rule that kind of sets a guideline, Jamon. And I don't know. And that's why I said this is this one kind of bothers me. Look at that chart. Let me show you another one to further emphasize. That chart on the column all the way to the right, it says not permitted, right? Then look at the row all the way at the bottom. Illustrations showing only individuals in ethnic dress, African-American families, or only white adults. That's a violation. There was a builder in Boston who built homes in the city of Boston. He had a billboard and he hired a model family. And this model family happened to be black on his billboard, talking about, hey, being home and things like that. The ACLU sued him for $2.8 million because his advertisement inferred that only black people lived in the inner city. And they won. And he went out of business simply because he showed only one ethnic group on this billboard. Have you guys noticed, literally, have you noticed commercials lately? Have you noticed the number of interracial marriages on commercials or same sex? couples on commercials because the fair housing says you cannot show just one group. By definition, you are inferring. Chase uh, used to be bank one. Now it's Chase. Chase Bank is the best at this. If you ever go into a Chase Bank, go into it, look at the posters they got on the wall. There are two things I will guarantee you. In those posters about checking accounts and things like that, there is never a white male in any of them. And there's always two people of such diverse culture, an older American Indian male talking to a young Asian girl. They're doing this to cover a lot of different nationalities, ages, uh, races, and things like that. When I first made the website, version one, I thought I was going to be really cool and I was going to get four or five pictures of, you know, somebody graduating, somebody studying, somebody doing this. So I went through the internet and I picked a bunch of pictures and I thought these are really cool. And I looked at them and as soon as I looked at them, the real estate agent in me went, holy crap. Guess what I picked? All five white males. Now, I felt bad and I actually thought to myself, did I do that subconsciously? Did I like the pictures? So I actually literally then started Googling Asian graduates. So female graduates, so I could get a different picture. And then I laughed to myself because I'm twisted. In order to not discriminate, in order to show I didn't discriminate, I actually had to discriminate and search out minority pictures. And then I got really smart and went, well, this is stupid. I just got rid of all of them and showed different things. So the fact is, I was I, I, in, inherently I did, whether it was on accident or on purpose. But then I had to actually discriminate to prove I didn't, because I actually had to search out specific nationalities and ages and races and religions to make sure that I didn't fall in this trap of only advertising certain ages, groups, and religions. But I know inherently that I am not, by definition, a racist. Actually, I tell everybody I'm an intelligentist. 